everyone, my name is Kelsey, and I'd like to welcome you to the very first Annapurna Interactive Showcase. As we enter our sixth year, we wanna thank everyone for the overwhelming amount of support we've received along the way. And because of that, we felt it was time to share what's next directly with you. Today, we'll have about 25 minutes of new game announcements, deeper dives on previously announced games, and short profiles on just a few of the developers we are really excited to be working with. We appreciate everyone watching and want to thank our partners from all over the world for making this possible. Now let's get this started. So you're standing in the shadows of Johnson Vendetti, huh? It ain't so bad. It's just that I guess folks think they know who I am where I should be going. Hmm. Have you considered becoming someone else entirely? Someone else entirely. I've decided to create the most elaborate stage persona the world has ever seen. Okay. Will you be down for dinner? We're having enchiladas. Boy, you loved me already be gone. We're going on a ride across the dilated pupils of the cosmos. The future is yours if you have the courage to grasp it. Have you back in time for breakfast? I'm Ben Esposito. In 2018, I released Donut County, a wholesome game designed for kids and adults alike. After that, I decided that my next game will not be for kids or adults. It'll be a game for freaks. Neon White is a single-player, speedrunning FPS where you can sacrifice your guns for godlike parkour moves. You play as White, a dead assassin plucked from hell. As a Neon, you have 10 days to purge heaven of a demonic invasion, but you're not alone. Only the fastest Demon Slayer will earn the right to stay in heaven. As you play White's story, you'll have plenty of opportunities to get to know the other Neons. You can use a soul card's magic to shoot like a gun, or you can discard it to use its special movement ability. When to shoot and when to discard is up to you, but if you want to go fast, you're going to need to discard your cards. Don't be afraid to use them. You can't take cards with you to the next level. Here's your handgun. Discard it to use Elevate, which lets you double jump to attack from above, or create new shortcuts. Here's your SMG. Discard it to use Stomp. It's self-explanatory. And here we have the shotgun. Discard it to launch yourself like a fireball. Now let's put it together. I'll demonstrate a level for you. Neon White is made up of tight, hand-designed levels that are meant to be replayed, with new things to do as you gain XP known as Insight. You can share level times with friends, or if you prove yourself, you can compete on the global Neon leaderboards. I got a silver. You can see I earned some insight, which unlocks a few new features for this level. Not bad, but let's see what it looks like if we play our cards right. Piece of cake. Nah, I practiced. Top medals improve your neon rank, which unlocks even more missions. It also earns more insight, which reveals hints for shortcuts and a hidden collectible in every level. Each one of these gifts is a mini puzzle that requires a clever use of card resources to collect. 
It's a tattletale toy. I know someone who loves these. Let's go find her. This is the map of Central Heaven. Here you'll get new missions and events where you can spend time with the other characters. Giving gifts you found in your missions will deepen your relationships, which can lead to certain encounters. It's not a traditional dating sim, but there's lots of juicy content to unlock, like side quests exploring the underworld, and hidden memories from your past life, which might change how your story ends. During the 10 Days of Judgment, you'll find weapons made of human souls, meet angels in the flesh, and if you become the number one demon slayer, they'll give you an ice cream cone. Neon White is coming to Nintendo Switch and PC this winter. If you're a freak, put it on your Steam wishlist. On behalf of the team, thank you. We'll see you in heaven. I'm Chandanae Kanayaka. I'm the studio head at Outer Loop Games. Uh, I'm a designer and artist. We're in uh, my backyard in Bothell, Washington, just uh, north of Seattle, and I run my studio out of my bedroom. So I'd worked with Eka for several years previously on different projects, and he pitched me this uh, game with a bird in it. We prototyped that and pitched it around, and that turned into Outer Loop. <laughs> I grew up in Sri Lanka, which is a former British colony, Falcon Age. It's a sci-fi game set in a, in a distant planet, but it's loosely based on anti-colonial sentiment. So for this new game, it's an idea I've had for a couple of years while we were making Falcon Age. Um, I didn't know what exactly what the game was going to be, but I knew thematically what we wanted to try to do. And I have a writing partner, Meg, who is in Bangalore. It took us a couple of years to kind of figure out the core idea for the story and the theme. And then we kind of pitch it to the team and see how they like it. It deals closer to some of the themes I wanted to try to tackle next, which is immigrant culture growing up in the U.S gossiping aunties and overbearing parents and family pressure. Really, the game comes together with the, with the, the whole crew of 15 and bringing their own specialty. Myself and Eka, we knew each other back in California on my first job, actually, and then eventually ended up starting out of loop. Every game I make, there's some aspect of juggling, parkour, martial arts, skateboarding. We're gonna go skating. This is all Azo, that's what he does, right? So. One of my main thing is I want games to be really accessible and easy. So I've been skateboarding for about 24 years, and I'm terrible at it. The Tony Hawk type of games, it's a break from reality of what actual skateboarding is and more of like the things I actually want to do. You rarely crash in the skateboarding portion because I'm trying to make it as accessible to as many people as possible. Good job. In my 20 plus years, this has been the most fun team I've ever worked on. <laughs> we wanted to put something out there that's more reflective of our, our lived experiences, which we feel like as, as a game will stand out. Our process has been find a unique theme that's not out there and then mix it with some more familiar gameplay. And that's, that's what we did with Falcon Age and that's what we're doing with the new game. We're really excited to talk about it.
Hi, my name is Jessica Mack. I'm a solo game dev from Toronto, Canada. This is my cat. My parents, they started a computer store. This is like in the early 80s. And back then, most people didn't have computers in their homes, but we did. And I guess as a side effect of that, I was also interested in how computers work. I would always tinker with them. And I met a friend who gave me my first compiler. It, it just seemed like magic. Like, how did you make it? Not even a video game, but like a program. I started off working alone because there was nobody else. My first game was solo. And then the second game, I collaborated with a musician. Then I took some time to like actually sit down and write songs and produce them properly. The music in this game, I just feel more confident about. The analogy I think of is, I say you're writing this song and you're like, we need someone to go off on the guitar at this point, guitar solo time. You can't tell someone how to do that. You just have to have the instrument in your hand and you have to feel it and you have to be like one with it and let it rip. It's the same way with video games. The computer is my instrument. The compiler is my instrument. I find I work strongest when I work in here, when it's just subconscious. You're just flowing in it, and you're making 100 decisions a second. And then by the time you come out of it, it's like it almost feels like you're waking up. With music, you can write a song that's three minutes and 30 seconds, and so much happens in it. Every eight bars, it's like it's something new, something new, something new. That's sort of the density that I want to put in this game. Music that can move you on such a visceral level is super interesting to me. And so all my games are music focused. The music for me is very much as important as the game part of it itself. This time with this game, it is an adventure game, but it's action, but there's like this musical component to it. When people play it, they won't know what to expect. I want to make an engaging experience, but not an addictive experience.
the one with the um, where you have to guess who the the little cartoon people are? Stratego. Is that it? No. Well, hi there. Hello. My name is Davey Reedon. I was the creator of The Stanley Parable and The Beginner's Guide. I'm Carlos Amanja. I was co-creator of Gone Home and Tacoma. And we uh, started a studio. It's true. It's called Ivy Road. We're working together. We're making a video game. We're working with Annapurna to make a totally unannounced game that we can't talk about yet. We are very, very lucky to get to be joined by our good friend Daniel Rosenfeld, AKA C418, the musician from Minecraft. And speaking of, Daniel is actually composing the music that you're hearing right now at this very moment. Let's go to him. Hey there, oh, hey, no, 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 sorry, I didn't, no, 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 I don't wanna, you're good, you're good. I just, I'm just, for the people, just saying, you know, hey, so. Can we give him a treat? No, 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 don't, don't feed him. That's all right, we'll leave him alone. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Mmm, ow. <laughs> Who eating this tea? We are both super excited about Ivy Road and uh, about the thing that we are working on together that we can't talk about. Uh, all we can really talk about is each other right now. That's and so true, I suppose. wrote a couple questions to ask you to kind of get to know you a little bit better to find out more okay. for, for the people at home uh, and about sort of our studio culture and what that's like. So question number one, if you really are a true gamer, name 10,000 games. Oh man. Well, I mean, honestly, there's like uh, Final Fantasy 1 through 10,000. <laughs> okay, actually, that's. I didn't expect her to get that right. A bus leaves Atlanta at 10.30 a.m. Okay. Traveling west at okay. 55 miles an hour. Okay. Why? You don't want to leave Atlanta? Uh, last question for you here. Uh, why do kids love the taste of Cinnamon Toast Crunch? You know, I understand the child psychologists have been debating this for like, Decades. You know, there's two schools of thought. On this well, that's all the time we have today. Mm. Thank you very much for joining us for this discussion <laughs> of the uh, studio values of Ivy Road and the things that we care about. Let's cut to Daniel. Let's cut to Daniel. Cheers. Cheers. Tea. Tea. So you've decided to be an insurance commando. Pirates are kidnapping cats from our ships. Luckily, the cats bought our deluxe insurance package. You. Your mission, eradicate the pirates by any means necessary. Protocol 127.1, no bullets, no problem. Call 832, being smelly and what to do about it. Oh no, you're making smell clouds. You're so dirty, a space pirate smelled you. Wash your whole body. Beware of blades. Protocol 999. Waste not, want not. Skin Deep. Wishlist now on Steam or BlendoGames.com. And remember, if you screw up, it's not the end.
هيدا Hello everyone, my name is Swan, producer at Blue 12 Studio, and today I'm going to show you more about Stray. In Stray, you play as a cat who has fallen inside the mysterious and forgotten city. Separated from his family and injured, he will have to explore and survive in this unwelcoming environment. From the cat's unique point of view, players must navigate their way through the dangers of this unfriendly place and use the cat's skills to solve puzzles and uncover mysteries along the way. Along his journey, the cat will meet a small drone named B12. Using the drone's ability to interact with objects in the world and communicate with the strange inhabitants of this secluded place, together they will work to learn more about the secrets of this forgotten community of human-like machines. Of course a cat will always be a cat, and his adventures will be filled with friendly and playful interactions with his new world. But these machines are not the only inhabitants of the city, and some encounters will not be as friendly or safe. Running fast, jumping, and using spells to avoid dangers will all be vital if you want to escape this city and be reunited with family. way to defend yourself, and the prey might become the hunter. Stray is coming to PS4, PS5 as well as PC in early 2022, and we can't wait to show you more.
It's funny, No Codes, I think we've kind of got the name of being a horror game dev and for every game we've made we've never set a make a horror game we've set out to make thrillers or atmospheric sci-fi sounds like you making that noise we release it and everyone's like that was terrifying we're like what's it we've pretty much known each other since the third year of primary school I'd be around at John and Graham's house, or they'd be around at, at mine. You kind of think back and you go, oh yeah, I was never really a big horror fan, and then you think, actually, that's all we watched. I think maybe Graham or Omar got the Aliens director's cut, and so just every Thursday for about a year after school, it went on. We were always very close, playing in bands together. I think there always has been that sort of creative drive to sort of work on a project between us all, and so this, in many ways, feels very natural. I always knew if, if I was gonna start something, I'd probably do it with Omar or Graham um, or both. Making games as a job, I wouldn't have believed my older self. We'd be doing this and working on the projects that we've worked on so far. Personally for me, No Code, and it's not because I'm working here, but they are one of the most exciting studios in Scotland by far. And I've always sort of had it in the back of my head that if I was ever going to jump ship, it would be to join them. It's incredibly encouraging to see where we could go, both as a company but I think what we could do for the city of Glasgow as well. So we're working on a, a, a new project. So, you know, the, the, this project's kind of like our biggest project to date. And obviously we've, we've scaled the team up, we've doubled in size. It's something that I didn't think we'd really get a chance to work on, you know, like something we'd be able to do in our career. It's one of these opportunities that come up and you just kind of, you have to move along with it. You know, we're taking what we do and what we love and trying to push it to the next stage with a bigger budget and a little bit more time. We've never really set out to make a horror game, but we've kind of ended up in that. Whereas this game, we are setting out to make a horror game. I don't think anyone's expecting what we're going to do next, um, which makes it even more exciting. Hey folks, Alex from Mobius here. Just wanted to give you a brief update on what we've been up to behind the Bale of Shadows. First off, Mobius and Unity have partnered together and are working hard to bring Outer Wilds to the Nintendo Switch. We look forward to having it in your hands this holiday season. We are also very excited to officially announce that we're making an expansion for Outer Wilds, and it's going to weave directly into the existing world and narrative. Now, if you've played the game, you might be wondering, how? And also why? And those are very good questions. Okay, without further ado, we hope you enjoy this willfully cryptic trailer for Outer Wilds first and only expansion. Thank you so much for watching our first showcase. We hope you enjoyed the sneak peek into the world of Annapurna Interactive. Until next time. Cheers. Mm.